it's Jennifer here from Belladonna's Botanicals, and this is a, I believe this is Yule Day 4 from the uh, 12 Days of Yule Challenge. And in this one, it's about feast magic. It's about um, what we do in our practices to uh, you know, create a potion, a recipe, a meal, whatever. So I have not been feeling well for the past couple of days, so I'm a little low energy. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a nice divination tea so I can have some nice woo, dreams before bed um, or while I'm, you know, in bed, which probably will be sooner than later because I'm a little tired. Anyways, so um, as you realize, no, I have a quite an extensive herbal. You can't see it goes all the way down to the floor. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to intuitively select a nice blend of herbs to make what either, sometimes it's called a tisane, but it's really an herbal tea or an herbal infusion. Um, a true tea would have tea leaf in it, whether it's a green tea, oolong, black tea, roy rooibos, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, my dad's the tea aficionado in the family, so um, hopefully I'm doing this right. But I'm going to make an herbal tea. I haven't done that for a while. And what I do when I make tea, um, I just stick to putting herbs. I don't put any natural like flavoring things in it. I could. I mean, I do actually have some flavoring stuff from uh, when I used to make uh, flavored lip balms. So I have some fla like flavoring stuff for that. <laughs> Anyways, so I don't know if it, I think I don't know if it was just mostly for lip balm or if you could actually put it something like that. So I, there's a difference between food grade and cosmetic grade. So I'm not gonna play with that. But anyways, I'm gonna intuitively s select some stuff and talk about some herbs for making tea. So it is Yule, it's uh, end of December. And I don't normally do video standing, so I'm wiggling around a lot. I'm usually seated. So anyways, I'm going to start picking out some things to put in there and talk about. Like really what I like to do, um, you want to have your herbs that provide the action. Unfortunately, a lot of times those herbs do not taste well. I wish I still had the footage of me after I made a Mexican dream herb tea when I'm like, oh, lovely. <laughs> Literally, that's what I did. It was so bitter. So when you have something in a tea, like if mugwort tea is one that a lot of people love for divination. Mugwort is very bitter. You need other stuff in there that's going to even out that taste, unless you can tolerate it. Because other than you just chug the tea and there you go. So one of my favorite things um, for tea, I love blue lotus. So um, I have all the lotuses. <laughs> I have red lotus, blue lotus, uh, white lotus, and, and red, white, blue, sa and sacred lotus. So I'm going to put in a little bit and we will go out to the kitchen at some point. I'm just putting everything in a little bowl. So put some blue lotus. Blue lotus is really great. It's very calming, very dreamy. I use it in a lot of the flying ointments. So it's really, it, 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 taste wise, like blue lotus essential oil smells divine. The taste from blue lotus is okay. It's, it's what we would call like a green taste. Like it doesn't have a whole lot of um, something like, say, my friend, which I'm going to put in here, which I'm self hibiscus. I am a big fan of fruity teas, floral teas, and fruity floral teas. Also, we'll we'll offer concessions for spicy teas, like anything that has like some clove and cinnamon and cardamom, all of that. Ironically, though, I do not like pumpkin spice co coffee or anything. So I'm going to put some of the hibiscus in here because that is going to give it its flavor, and it's also going to turn the tea a lovely, brilliant red color. So we have our hibiscus. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So what else is good for divination? Um, that I'm comfortable making a tea with and making a video of me making tea and drinking the tea and hopefully not dying. So a little bit of chamomile in since this is a divination tea for doing dream work chamomile is really great for sleepy time teas um you'll that's a very common one um so i'm gonna put a little bit of chamomile in here 
I also like very strong tea, so I put in a lot more tea, a lot more plant material than probably most people do to make a cup of tea <laughs> when I'm doing this. Um, another one that is really good that you wouldn't probably think about it, but calendula has some nice like divinatory, like like conscious expand the expanding entheogenic. Uh, properties so calendula um what else? a tiny little bit of mugwort in here um this is i get a couple different kinds of mugworts most mugwort that's wrong word, just looks similar so most mugwort you get looks like this it's a, it's already cut and sifted um mugwort is a giant pain to do that to this is more like mugwort as it would come off you know kind of the branches also a giant pain to uh, run this through a blender, but uh, to cut and sift. I'm just gonna put a little bit in because like I said, uh, mugwort is very bitter. Let's see what else I want to put in here. Um, I feel like we need something more for flavor. So what I'm going to do now is go into the spice section, because as I mentioned there before, Vetiver, you're not a spice. You're on the wrong show. I'm going to put in some, I have to get more. This is uh, cinnamon bark. Um, this is what it looks like when it's cut and sifted. Put the cinnamon in. A little bowl. And... Bit of it's the it's the end of year. I need to restock a bunch of stuff. This is actually a fun series because I don't, you know, I'm not up and about doing a lot of videos like this. Maybe I'll do more. <laughs> um, cardamom will be good. Some cardamom pods. What else do I have down here? Uh, not feeling anise or, uh, ooh, I know what I want to put. We want some citrus in here too. I do like citrus teas as well. I don't feel like this one is like peppermint is a, is a common like tea base. I don't feel like peppermint's going to go well with this, but what I have, um, this is a uh, dried lemon peel. Some dried lemon peel in here. I'm actually gonna put a little more lemon peel in here. I'm also gonna put in a little bit of orange peel. Big jar of orange peel. I actually use a lot of these, so some orange peel in here. Right. Do I want anything else in here? So we have all this. So we have, you know, the mugwort, blue lotus, and calendula, which are going to be sort of our divinatory base. Um, they're going to give us a little bit of expansion, calming the chamomile and the uh, blue lotus are going to be good for calming. Um, and we are going to go out to the kitchen and make some tea and hopefully uh, my battery doesn't crap out mid journey. So we're going to go for a little ride. All right. So I need to plug my, my, uh, thing in. So walking down my hallway very carefully. So I don't spill my tea. Wow. I didn't trip over anything. Amazing. So we're going to welcome okay. to my kitchen. Here we are. Welcome to my kitchen. It's slightly a mess um, solely just because if you see any pots on the stove, I've got a thing of bubble bath, some leftover from the double boiler for making soap, and I'm going to be making some Florida water. And I have some soap over there. So um, this is my favorite kind of teapot. I know it's not the most fancy teapot in the world, but it is... For making this kind of like a loose tea, it's really nice. It's got the little strainer thing. I'm going to, I don't know how to do this and show you because hands are a thing. 
so I'm going to put all my good stuff in here. Hopefully it turns red from the, it should, from the. So I, when I make tea, this will make about, for me, maybe about a cup or two of, of like that size. I don't have fancy teacups. I should have teacups, but do not. So I have all my tea in the little cylinder. And I, I'm going to put some water in here. Did not, oh. All right, I'm gonna get water from the fridge, put it in here because I have the water purification thing in there. This just might take a hot minute. You can see the 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 uh, hibiscus is already turning it kind of peachy. I'm also someone who loves a lot of honey and sugar in their tea. Uh, basically, I end up making, I think I make just warm juice by the end of the, by the end of the uh, journey. That should be about enough for now. And see, you can see it's already turning kind of pinky or peachy lid on and maybe I will remember there we go had to remember which uh on the which burner on the stove I was turning on so yeah um I'm gonna make this tea I'm gonna put it my zook up it's sadly starting to get kind of dinged up but it's my big cup I use for tea and for uh coffee um, so we want that. Ha. And granulated. So it probably will take a few minutes for the tea to become tea or the herbal tea. Now I do have, uh, a jar of, hold on. Yeah. I do have a jar of green tea that I could put in this to kind of give it an actual tea base, um, but decided against it. But anyways, another cool thing you can do with this kind of tea is you can, you can do mimic this exact process and you can make something called tub tea. So what you would do is you can make the you can boil the tea in the pot and pour it in the tub, or you could take like a muslin cloth bag, or even like an organza bag, and you put all the herbs in it and run it under the hot water, and then you get that herbal kind of bath. So and you'll sometimes see like in botanicas, they have those herbal baths where it kind of looks like a bag of potpourri, but you boil it on the stove and then you put that in the water. Um, that and you take your spirit your bath that way. Um, see them at bodegas too, on occasion, depending on the bodega, but any, so my tea is slowly, it's also, hot. you can see it's getting more and more red from the hibiscus. I hope this tastes good. If I make a yucky face, apologies. Um, I, I wasn't measuring anything in this. I was just like a pinch of this, a pinch of that, a pinch of this. And sometimes for me, it's just making, getting the right amount of sweetener in it and the right um, blend of things. Like I don't like a lot of teas that, I let's just say a, a matcha latte is basically like grassy. I'm ready. Um, we're back. Sorry, my computer decided, decided to uh, restart itself. And now I'm out of focus. And for some reason, I don't know what it is in my kitchen. Like certain outlets don't necessarily work very well with certain things. Like, well, it's so like plug, unplug, plug, unplug. Why isn't this doing anything? Anyways, so my tea is now boiling. So I'm going to go deal with that and get my tea ready. And since I make my tea in a glass teapot, look how beautifully red that is. 
That's like the perfect crimson color. The actual light is not doing it justice. But yeah, it's a beautiful color. That was about enough for a very big tea, cup of tea and maybe like topping it off once. Let's see, it's gonna be very hot. First thing, let's see how it smells. Mm, you could definitely smell the hibiscus and a little bit. I, I can, I can hit, I got the notes um, from the, the citrus in it. Starting to get a little bit of the uh, spicy notes from the clove and the cinnamon and the cardamom. That will give it a really nice body. Um, just kind of trying to, let's see if I can sip this without burning myself. Oh, mm. okay. Like if mold wine was a tea, I think that's what I just made. So and I, uh, I didn't have to put a whole lot of sugar and honey in it either. So um, I'm going to say this turned out fairly, fairly well. So now what I would do after I made said tea, um, it's a little early for me to go to bed, but what I would do with this um I probably have this a couple an hour to probably a couple hours before I was gonna go fall asleep asleep just because this is a lot of liquid your bladder is small <laughs> so um I would probably if I was gonna do some really intense dream work astral travel um any of that um or even just deep meditation or spirit channeling and communication or, you know, doing tarot readings or any kind of divinatory work like that. Um, I might take a bath too. And what you can do in the bath is some preliminary work. Have your cup of tea. You can drink tea in the bathtub. I do it. I've eaten entire meals in the bathtub, but that's just me and I'm weird. Um, so yeah, this is my tea. You could take a lovely ritual bath before you do your dream work or astral travel, whatever you want to do for the you for Yule uh, or any time of year. This is, I, I would drink this, this tea any time of year. So it is quite tasty and not for nothing. I'm impressed because flying by the seat of my pants here, I don't make a lot of, I'm not a tea maker, but I mean, I could be <laughs> um, anyways. So yeah, that's, that's my divination tea. Um, you know, you could do, you could do this, make a batch and put it in your, in the bathtub and that will be your tub tea, um, absorbed by osmosis, um, or whatever you prefer to do for your preparatory div, uh, work for any kind of divination. I tend to take my baths during the day, like in the morning because I wake up in pain. So I need the hot water to like loosen up my muscles. So for me, Excuse me, if I was going to be doing something like this at night, I would do a special bath for that. So um, anyways, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe because algorithms suck. And <coughs> yeah, so thank you for watching. Sign up for e-newsletter, follow us on social media so you know what we're doing. Love y'all.